Welcome to AEHelp.com's IELTS Test Preparation videos. You will now see Rihanna from Kazakhstan score a band 9 for her performance on the speaking interview wearing a face mask. After the interview, I will give you tips on how you can also score high bands even with a face mask on. As well, I will share information about rules and regulations to follow for your IELTS exam during the pandemic. Again, we have partnered with Cambly, a world-class app that lets you connect with a native English-speaking tutor 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere and anytime. Simply download the app and begin practicing for your next IELTS exam. Cambly has been generous enough to give us this discount code also in the video description to save on 1, 3 and 12 month plans. With this code on a 12 month plan, you get 4 months of free English speaking practice. And don't worry, when you cancel any unused minutes on 3 and 12 month plans, Cambly will give you a refund. Try Cambly for free and save up to 40% with our discount code. Begin learning for success today. Now watch and learn. Welcome to the speaking portion of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test and I will record this for marking purposes. May I see your identification? Yes, my pleasure. Here's my passport. Please take a look. Thank you. And what is your full name? My first name is Rayana and my surname is Aliyeva, just as it is written in my passport. Please call me Rayana. Okay, Rayana, here is your Thank passport you. back. The speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. What do you do in your free time? Well, since I'm really into makeup and beauty products, in my spare time I enjoy sharing tips on these products. I even have an Instagram account where I regularly post videos. How did you get to this exam today? I took the number 10 bus for 8 stops and then I walked another 10 minutes to get here. It was quick and convenient and it gave me the chance to do a bit of last minute review of my notes. Let's talk about languages. Why do people learn languages? Well, the primary reason for people to study languages is to communicate with others. Within this, people acquire languages for work and studying and living in foreign countries. I've learned English so that I can do my higher education in the UK. How often do you use English? I use English on a daily basis, um, whether I'm talking to my international friends or colleagues, using social media or watching some shows. I'm constantly using English. Where do you use English frequently? Mm, definitely at my workplace. I work in marketing at an international firm and I have co-workers from all over the world. So the workplace language is English. Who do you speak English to the most? Mm, that would be my co-worker and friend Amina. She's from Morocco and we work on many projects together. Also, we hang out outside of work and our common language is English. How have learning languages changed? Mm, studying languages has changed a lot in the past few decades because of considerable improvement in technology, and rapid globalization. Uh, it has become much more possible to study from native speakers of a language, both locally and through the internet. Um, I've studied a lot of English with native tutors and using apps. If you could learn another language, what would it be and why? Mm, I would like to learn a bit of Arabic if I have a bit of time. Not only because I could speak and practice with Amina, but it is also widely spoken around the world, uh, so it would be very useful. That's the end of part one. Now we will continue with part two. For part two, there's a card in front of you. Don't turn it over yet. 
You will have one minute to look at the questions on the card and there's also some note paper and a pencil. You can take notes in that one minute if you wish and then you will have two minutes to speak. I will tell you when to start, when to stop. All right, Ryana, your one minute preparation time starts now. Go ahead. Ryana, your one minute preparation time is up. Please begin speaking. Um, a tool that is quite dangerous, which I have used before, is a chainsaw. Uh, this is a gas powered wood cutting tool that has a handle and a motor with a metal bar extending from it. And around the bar, there is a chain with sharp teeth. The motor and handle have a plastic cover, which is a bright orange color. The last time I had used the chainsaw was about 10 months ago, when I was helping my uncle clean up around his property and get some firewood ready. I used the chainsaw to remove some dead branches from trees around the property and I also cut down a couple of smaller trees that were either dead or overcrowded. A uh, chainsaw can be quite dangerous if it is not uh, maintained or mishandled. It is a very powerful cutting tool which can slice into a person's knee, leg or foot and cause a lot of damage to tissues and even bones. And also if the user cuts into hard material like metal or rock, or if the chain is worn out and not replaced, the saw can break and the pieces can come apart. Uh, flying pieces of the chain or the material being cut, like the pieces of wood or pebbles, can damage the user's eyes and even blind them. So whenever a person is using a chainsaw, they must wear the correct safety equipment. Uh, the most important are a nice pair of boots, uh, preferably with steel toes, uh, earmuffs to protect the ears from the loud sound of the engine, and safety glasses. Uh, there are special pants which can protect the legs from the chain, and also a helmet is a good idea to protect the head in case of falling branches. I will stop you there, Ryana. Your time is up. Please put the uh, notes to the side as well as the card. Just turn it over and the pencil. And now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask a question related to your response and some questions connected to the topic of part two. Who taught you how to use a chainsaw? Oh, um, my uncle Nur Islam taught me the way to use it about five years ago. He saw that I was quite interested in it when we were visiting with my dad and he showed me what to do with it and what to be careful about. Let's talk about dangerous objects. What are some common objects around the home which can be dangerous when used incorrectly? Mm, there are quite a few household items that can be hazardous to health if not used well. Immediately a blender, a kitchen knife and a hairdryer come to mind. These items can either cut, burn, or electrocute the user. I know I've cut myself with a knife a few times in the past. Which of these most often leads to injuries? Uh, I would say that the kitchen knife is probably the one that most commonly injures people, just because it is frequently used. I mean, there are probably thousands of people around the world right now cutting a finger while I'm finishing this sentence. Where are some common places where people can encounter lots of dangerous items? Well, aside from the kitchen at home, um, construction sites come to mind, like where a new building is being put up. Uh, there are many types of heavy machinery which can be quite dangerous if people aren't careful. How has technological advancements reduced the danger of certain tools? Um, new innovations have made a lot of equipment much safer than in the past. New types of sensors and materials reduce the likelihood of getting injured. Can you give a couple examples of this? Yes, uh, like the chainsaw that I had talked about. Uh, it has a safety guard added to it and my uncle's table saw will turn off as soon as a person's hand is too close to it. 
Also, safety gear like helmets and clothes are much brighter and stronger than in the past. Let's talk about user safety. What should people do before they use an object that is potentially dangerous? It is very important that people read the safety instructions and user manuals before using an object that can be dangerous. Um, also, I think it is a good idea to watch some safety videos online and get the right training. I think it would be a really bad idea to start up a chainsaw without knowing how to use it correctly. Why do some people not do this? Well, I think it's mostly ignorance. Uh, times people are in a rush and just want to get a job done, so they do not pay attention to safety. This is usually when problems happen. What kinds of objects are commonly found around the home that help people to avoid injuries? Hmm, that's a good question. Please give me a moment to think. Mm, gloves, oven mitts, uh, safety glasses, earplugs, and bicycle helmet are some items that many people have around the home which can minimize the risk of injuries. Where should people store objects like these? I think it is a good idea to keep uh, these items stored in easy to access and visible places so that people always remember to use them. I keep my bike helmet on a hook next to my entrance, so whenever I go out biking, I always remember to put it on. That's the end of part three. That concludes the speaking portion of the exam. You will be able to see your mark online in about two days, and you will have your official mark with the other sections in a couple weeks' time. Have a great rest of your day, Rihanna, and remember to take your identification with you. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So why does Rihanna deserve this Band 9 Expert User Evaluation for her performance on this speaking interview? Well, clearly, Rihanna is very proficient. She's fluent. She doesn't hesitate to answer any of the questions. She's confident throughout the interview. Also, Rihanna uses a broad range of vocabulary and grammar. In the subtitles, we have underlined some of the words and phrases that show a band 9 level. Make sure to go back and check these. Rihanna is also natural. She gives accurate and detailed responses to every question. She answers, explains, and often includes examples to support her ideas. Her responses are clearly original and not memorized templates from books or videos. This is what you need to do in order to get these high band scores on your next IELTS exam. Make sure to practice these steps. Now, let me give you a few important details about what you have to pay attention to when you sit your IELTS exam during the COVID pandemic. IELTS test centers are taking several precautionary steps to make sure that you and everyone else stays healthy on your test day. For these reasons, you will not be allowed to enter the IELTS test center before your given time. You will receive an email from IELTS telling you what is the earliest time that you can enter the test center. As well, this email will include all of the following points. Firstly, you will have to wear a face mask at all times during your exam as soon as you enter the test center. As well, you will have to wash your hands and use a hand sanitizer. You can bring your own hand sanitizer, which is a good idea, but it must not have any writing or it must not have a label on it. As well, they will check your temperature. If you show any symptoms of a cold or flu, you will not be allowed to sit your exam. If you are feeling ill before your IELTS test day, make sure to contact your exam center and ask for your exam to be rescheduled. In addition, you will have to bring your own pen, 
pencil and eraser. Your eraser, again, must not have a covering or have any writing on it. As well, you should bring a water bottle. The water bottle should be transparent and, again, must not have any label or writing on it. Pay attention to these details and arrive to your test center early. Dress according to the weather so that you're not hot or cold if you have to stand outside for 5 or 10 minutes. You should take with you some speaking scripts that you can leave in the coat room, which you can use to practice with other people who are waiting to enter the exam center. Make sure to pay attention for that email that IELTS will be sending you with all of these details. Read it carefully at least a couple of times and be extra certain that you're prepared on exam day. Of course, watch many of our videos and practice our strategies to ensure that you can get the high band scores on your next IELTS exam. Good luck when you sit your test. Remember to download and try Cambly to improve your speaking for your next IELTS exam. Also, to get many more video lessons like this one, as well as a fully interactive course, original practice exams, and tips and strategies to get those high band scores, visit and join our premium package at aehelp.com. Also, download and link the app Academic IELTS Help. Begin learning for success today. Subscribe to our channel. Click over here. Watch another video. Click right up here. And click our IELTS Hero to join our premium package and get access to all of our videos, practice exams, and a fully interactive course.